All right. Um, hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, it's actually great uh, to be having this session again. Uh, today is the first day in this. Uh, so, yeah, it's the last week of the incubation program, and it has been really interesting thus far. I mean, we uh, showing you on the screen some of the practical sections, uh, you know, learning experience from various practical on site sections, bachelor sections, our experts, international, global, uh, leading professionals, teaching us, training us uh, around digital and professional technologies in agriculture and much more beyond the technical. This week, we are focusing it on enterprise development or soft skills, things you need to actually know around um, curating or perhaps bringing your innovation to the market, um, building your brand, and some things to actually inspire you. Uh, that's actually what we're doing uh, this week. And it's actually the week that we are wrapping up. Or, I mean, looking back, it's actually been interesting. Uh, I mean, we've received some wonderful and positive feedback from battery sections. You know across the world from our facilitators across the world i'm so 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 excited and today it's not an excep exception we have you know humor uh with us today and um, it's going to be taking us through uh drone business and uh, entrepreneurship so get ready uh you know is actually a drone consultant and it's also a drone business coach so you are actually going to be learning from a leader and i'm also happy to say that he is also the uh, the chairman of the african drone Club. so he's a powerhouse he's also a mentor so guys without further ado uh like we always do uh we would be introducing the Shumfield academy just in a few minutes who are we what do we do what do we stand for um, if you actually join us for the first time so that you can maybe get a glimpse of what we're actually doing and understand our why, you know, where we are going and what we want to do. So I will be inviting yourself uh, to the stage now to actually uh, take us through that. And then we'll be leaving the floor for you know, humor, uh to to actually carry us to where we want to be. <laughs> All right. Coming. I'm trying to get that on street. It's missing. Where is this door? So are you ready? Any luck?
Okay, um, so I guess we're going to move to the um, immediately straight to our lecture for today, and um, yeah, really good to have. So, I'm going to be reading the bow of Eno Humo uh, as he actually comes on stage for his lecture today. Uh, so, today we are going to be talking about uh, Eno Humo is going to be taking us through introduction to grown business and entrepreneurship. And who is Eno Humo? Uh, who is going to be our first speaker today? He's a drone business coach and mentor, current chairman of the African Drone Forum, co founder of Global Air Media. FBC and the Global Air Drone Academy. He is often asked what led him to delve into the world of drones, pointing to several factors such as his desire for a career change, his entrepreneurial flair, his innate curiosity, and the uh, acceleration he experienced during his first drone flight. He recounts his journey. And um, having entered the industry in 2015, Traveled to four countries, impacted and to thousands of students on drone technology, and assisted over 300 drone businesses worldwide in embarking on their entrepreneurial journey. Uh, some of the few players on the staff is a uh, FAA Part 175 pilot, collaboration with the US Department. Um, Okay, without uh, without any delay, I uh, will be bringing on stage. You know, uh, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you so much for doing this. <laughs> yeah, no okay. problem. No problem. Glad to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I I, I know that uh, it it's quite early, you know, shifting, and uh, but thank you so much for having uh, doing this with us and. Um, I'm really eager to, and our students are all uh, on YouTube and on LinkedIn, ready to actually learn from you and impacting them, also inspiring them. I think the story is relatable, even reading your profile. Yeah. So you have a floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, very happy to, to be here with you and excited to, to share a little bit about my story and um, yeah, and, and, and what I've done so far. Just so I'm aware, I know we're on, on different platforms. Um, are there, yeah, how many uh, uh, are we talking to? Are there gonna be, yeah, interaction questions and things like that as well? Yes, yes. Awesome. So as the questions come in, I'm gonna pop it on the screen for you to see and uh, okay. maybe comment uh, you'd like to see how I'm doing today. <clears throat> okay, yeah. great. So yeah, I'll just, I'll just jump right into it. Um, uh, of course, as you see from the title, um, what I talk a lot about is the business side of drones. And I know you, that you all are getting the technical experience and learning uh, the different sensors and different applications and how to be in the field, how to do the actual job. Uh, but of course, if you want to actually run a business and, and create your own uh, you know, avenues for, uh, for your enterprise, there are some fundamental things that you have to do. Um, and getting started, you know, really is the first phase. Um, sustainability is, is, you know, is, is the next phase and, and really understanding um, what it takes to build a, a good business. So um, these are just, you know, one of the topics that I talk about. Um, this is actually a, a training that I, um, that you can find also on my uh, uh, YouTube uh, pages under, on the Global Air U and we have a different, you know, resources you can check out there. Um, so, you know, I will preface that, you know, this this uh, title and um, this this topic may be a little advanced, but um, we still, of course, cover the fundamentals of running a business. So there's something in here for everyone, no matter if you've never you know, even thought about starting a business yet or if you've been in business for years, there's something that you're going to be able to take away from this presentation. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is, of course, the systematic approach, you know, to to your drone business, um, you know, in 2024 and what's actually being done. What is the standard for generating leads and for getting more business uh, for your for your drone venture? Um, what it takes to build a six figure business, you know, and have aspirations beyond that. Um, and then, of course, you know, a five step process that I've uh, come up with to really set up your own you know, sales funnel. Uh, to drive, you know, clients and, and interest, um, uh, you know, potentially for your for your drone business. 
So, um, you know, originally when I made this training, this was for, like I said, more advanced pilots. Um, but of course, this is for, you know, if you're making uh, zero dollars, if you're making five, you know, 10K a month, um, if you're looking for, you know, a predictable way to get new, you know, high paying clients um, or even attract, you know, high paying clients is, of course, a way that you have to brand yourself um, starting from your website, you know, your personal profile, your LinkedIn, all of these things really go hand in hand in, you know, building your business. Um, a lot of times that we have uh, companies that just rely on referrals, right? So referrals are, of course, uh, you know, one way uh, of doing business. But if you actually want to grow your business, you have to figure out how am I going to get leads, right? And not just depend on word of mouth and someone just tell someone else about the, you know, the great job that I did. Um, I categorize the drone professional really in two, uh, you know, main categories. Um, one are the what I call the DSPs, of course, the drone service providers. Um, you know, these are the ones that are, of course, offering practical, you know, hands on drone services like aerial photography, surveying, mapping inspection, like you're in the field, of course. Um, then you have, you know, drone consultants who are more um, strategic, right? They're doing more advice and structuring of drone programs, um, uh, uh, setting up operations manuals, helping with regulations and, and things like that. Um, so the reality is that, you know, it very, it, it's very much possible to, uh, to get, you know, more clients, um, as you wish, it really is a numbers game at the end of the day, the more people that you reach out to with a great offer with great branding, um, the more likelihood you have of, of closing, right? The reason why a lot of businesses don't grow is because they're just not reaching out to enough people. Um, you can't just, you know, say, Hey, I'm going to reach out to, um, you know, to 10 people and expect to close all 10, right? The numbers just never, never work up like that. So you really have to be targeted um, in your approach. So um, this is why we're here, right? We're really the only company right now that's dedicated to drone business development and, and educating uh, drone businesses on how to actually run uh, their business. A little bit about myself. I started in the drone space in, in 2015, and that was actually after I was um, in Nigeria um which is where my my family is is, is from and um yeah i saw a drone being used for an outdoor event and i was hooked you know at that point um, i came back to the states in baltimore which is you know where i was born and i saw all the different applications uh, or heard about all different applications drones would be used for so agriculture you know um uh, surveying and mining construction film and photography uh, I was really just hooked, you know, once I found out all the different applications. So uh, we started to do commercial services in 2015, going out, you know, doing real estate jobs, construction site, you know, mapping. And, you know, at a certain point, I really felt that we were doing way too much. We were trying to do way too much. Um, at some point, we actually started to do uh, STEM workshops and training, you know, for youth and after school programs and summer camps all under, you know, one umbrella. So we decided to, to break things off and create the Global Air Drone Academy, which is our nonprofit, while keeping our for-profit company to do our commercial work. Um, but still, under our for-profit, we were doing way too much, right? And I'm really glad that this, this workshop is going on because, you know, if you decide to focus on agriculture, you know, let your focus be there, right? Are there tons of other applications for drones? Absolutely. But if you are passionate about agriculture, if you have connections, if you really feel that like you can grow and you want to grow, you know, in this space, you can absolutely focus just on agriculture and be just fine, you know, as a drone professional and make a lot of money, right? The issue that we were having is we were we were trying to be really good, you know, in so many areas, um, and we never got really really solid and targeted in one. So at some point we had to say, all right, what do we want to do, right? What do we what what do we what are we known for? What do we want to focus on? And um, we realized that, you know, training and education was, you know, our strong suit. So at that point, you know, we were able to get different opportunities. As Femi mentioned, we have, you know, connections and, and partnerships with the U.S. Department of State. Um, some of our programs that we've done in countries like, you know, Kyrgyzstan and Ethiopia, um, you know, even Nigeria here, you know, all these have been a result of, you um, you know, previous projects, right? Being able to show them that, hey, this is how you can make an impact, you know, with drones. Uh, this is what it means to, uh, you know, take drones just 
as a tool and make it more of an educational um, uh, thing. So been able to travel to different countries, um, the UAE, uh, Kenya, um, you know, even had the Secretary of Transportation, you know, visit our office in, in Baltimore on one year as well. And then we've also done things like drone soccer, right? So using drones as a, um, for a game, right? And uh, Femi actually uh, refereed our first ever competition, the first ever competition on the continent. Uh, Femi was actually the, the referee. So um, we absolutely believe in, in you know, diversifying um, access to this technology as well. Um, it's not just for, uh, you know, uh, advanced adults who can afford it, right? We want to put this in the hands um, of the next generation as well and make sure that they have the tools uh, needed. Um, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, so, yes, so basically, um, what I want to start to get into is, you know, the reality of being an entrepreneur, right? Um, there are different stages, right, that you're going to have to go through. And, and um, when you get into this, you know, space, of course, a lot of you right now are probably looking at this and like, hey, this is this is it, right? I love drones. I love farming. I just want to, you know, get it. And, and you're, you're sort of, you know, very excited, right? Very uh, passionate, very optimistic. Um, but I'm sure Femi, you know, has told you, and he probably will, you know, reiterate again, uh, you go through a lot of ups and downs being in business for yourself, right? You're going to hear a lot of no's. Um, you're going to go through a lot of challenges. I mean, challenges you didn't even realize right, that, that that was going to be a challenge uh, will come up. So, um, and I'll send these slides that you can have as well, but something I like to refer to is like the emotional uh, cycle of change for entrepreneurs, right? So stage one, you're like, really, you have this, you know, what we call uninformed optimism, right? So you're really just like, yeah, this is, this is everything we're going to, we're going to get in, we're going to grow our business, you know, and everything is good, right? Once you get into it, it's like, all right, you really understand, you learn how much it actually takes to be successful, right? So at that point, you know, you kind of creep under this pessimism line where a lot of people, most people will say, you know what? Wow. You know, now I'm informed, right? Now I understand like how much work is done. Am I able to do this, right? Am I able to commit myself to doing this? Um, <clears throat> and then you get to this stage three where we actually call the valley of despair. Now this is where most people quit, right? This is where most people are like, you know what? Nothing's making sense. I'm not growing. No one's answering my calls. I keep sending out, you know, and it's, you're in such a, a low state that most people say, you know what, this is not for me. This is not something that I can, you know, continue to do. So, and this is not just for drones, right? This is for any type of business. This is for any, any, you know, activity of, of, uh, that takes, you know, effort and, 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 you know, seeing the other side, I mean, you're going to hit this, this space, right? And you really have to like, you know, dig into it. So, um, the most successful people go past this stage, right? They, they, you know, understand fundamentally that this is a part of the journey right so then you reach this like informed optimism where you've gone through the despair right you've gone through this space and now you're at stage four where you're like all right you know what i've gone through that you know i've learned this and now you have this optimism to say hey now i can take this next you know level and go forward and then you have now you reach stage five where you know everything is successful and fulfillment and i'll be honest most people see you at stage five and won't even realize what you had to do to get there. They're just like, oh, wow, they just they just popped up at stage five, right? Without knowing that there are so many different things that you go through before, you know, reaching that. So I thought that was really good to kind of show um, that a lot of this is, you know, we can talk strategy all day, but it's fundamental, it's mindset, it's, it's passion, right? And those literally are the things that's going to carry you through entrepreneurship. We can check to have all the checklists in the world, but if you don't, if you aren't passionate about it, um, it's never going to happen. So, um, so yeah, we we decided to put together um, a strategic plan and really show drone entrepreneurs how to get more leads. And what we've come up with is this funnel called the ABC funnel, and it really breaks down three specific sections: awareness, bonding, and conversion. Um, so. Whenever you are getting or sourcing, you know, a new client, there's a journey that they have to go on, right? You don't just 
talk to someone one day and the next day they're paying you, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. That never happens, right? There's a there's amount of time, right, that goes from the, the day that you meet this person, the day that you send a follow up email to the day that they actually become a client, right? There's literally someone that, you know, I've been speaking with um, back in, in December, right? And we are in our final days of, of, of signing, uh, you know, a contract that will start on, on April the 1st. It's taken months, right? Is it worth it? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's been worth it to kind of stick it out, but that comes with managed expectations, right? If I maybe felt slighted that they didn't get back to me quickly or they were just brushing me off, right? I could have easily lost out, you know, on that opportunity, but being consistent, understanding that, Hey, expectations and, and the customer has to go through a journey. Um, that will definitely help you in a long run. So what is that journey, right? It's this funnel, right? It's understanding they have to first find out about you. Then you have to build trust by bonding with them. And then finally, after they trust you, then you can present to them an offer to say, Hey, I can come in and solve your problems for this amount of money in this amount of time, right? Um, so we'll go through these five steps and then I definitely wanna leave some time for, for questions and answers. But um, yeah, what are those five steps? First, set the foundation. Two, do a brand audit, right? Three, create awareness like you saw in the funnel. Four, build trust with your leads. And then five, close the deal. So as far as foundations, what you want to think about is the rule of one, right? Um, and I know this is a very specific use case and topic here, but I'm sure there are some drone enthusiasts that may end up in other areas or maybe want to explore another place. But the most successful drone companies do this, right? They focus on solving one problem within one niche for one avatar with one really good offer, right? So what does that actually mean? So an example, agriculture, you know, crop spraying here, what is the problem you're solving? Requirement for precise, regular monitoring of large agricultural fields to optimize crop health and yield. What niche are you, are you targeting? Of course, it's agriculture. Who is your target customer or your avatar, right? It's farm owners or agronomists, um, age 35 to 55, focus on sustainable practices, yield optimization, and efficient resource use. Now, this is not saying that this is the target customer. It depends on where you are, you know, um, your location. This is just an example. I just, yeah, this, I just want to prep. This is not, you know, you shouldn't copy and paste this. It's just, it's just so you can see what this potentially looks like. And then what unique offer, of course, a drone-based precision agriculture service offering detailed crop health crop health analysis, irrigation management, and pest detection using multi-spectral imaging, right? So you can see how the rule of one, you know, breaks down in that space. Example two, maybe you decide to focus on solar panel inspections. What is that one problem? The need for inspection of solar panels to ensure optimal performance. Of course, you know, that's in the solar panel niche, target customer, solar farm managers and maintenance teams um 35 to 50 years old prioritizing system efficiency sustainability and preventative maintenance you may be wondering why to yourself why is he pointing out the age like what does that matter you want to be very specific with your avatar right your avatar is like what is the prototypical person who's going to buy your service right um that helps you target a specific person right and when you're writing content specifically you're not thinking about, all right, who's going to be like, who am I talking to? Who am I? You know, you have one specific person in mind. So outside of just identifying their age, I mean, this is like, you know, uh, just a quick example here. But your full avatar is going to have like um, their their background, like they most likely have a degree in, in, in uh, some sort of engineering, for instance, or they live in a certain area. Right or um they have you know specific pain points like you know uh delays and and inspection issues like you can actually like you know categorize them you can you can create a prototypical person so when you're creating content it makes it so much easier um so i did just want to preface that as well um another example you know uh 
offshore wind farm maintenance, uh, the challenge of risky maintenance checks, you know, require uh, required for offshore wind turbines, um, target customer, you know, offshore wind farm owners um, and maintenance personnel focus on safety, operational efficiency, uh, so on and so forth. And then what is that unique offer? Um, advanced drone inspection service equipped with high definition cameras and environmental sensors designed for offshore conditions, enhancing ma uh, maintenance, efficiency and safety. So again, just to give you a baseline on some examples. Step two is branding, right? Before you start reaching out to folks, and this is, you know, if you're running a business, right? If you want to you know, actually promote yourself and, and, uh, and, and actually get some meaningful clients, your branding has to be in order, right? And I know how it is. In the beginning, you're just kind of bootstrapping, you're creating your own logos, you're, you know, paying whatever you can to get the logo done. But there's, you know, resources out there for free that you can use. My personal recommendation is Canva, and you can go in and make yourself a nice, clean brand. If you are not a graphic designer, you know, I one of my biggest tips today, if you're not a graphic designer, please find one. Right. Um, do not, you know, compromise or not. Do not underestimate the power of great graphic design. Right. So if you don't have some if you if you if you're not like, you know, well versed in creating a PDF or brochure or a flyer, if that's something that you don't typically do then please do not just start like doing it, you know, all of a sudden for your help. Find someone that can help you with your branding. Um, and I promise you, you will, you know, it will get you so much further ahead than you trying to figure it out or just saving a little money to, to try to learn how to do it on your own. Um, there's someone that I'm sure you could talk to some, you know, we have friends that can do graphic design, right? Relatives and cousins who can, you know, make flyers and things. So, I just want to you know stress that but the reason i'm so keen and so serious on it is because yeah it, it means all the world when you're reaching out to people so <clears throat> you want to have of course a modern logo right if you notice here none of these logos by all these reputable companies none of them have drones in it right you know a lot of times i see when people are making their own drone companies they want to put an actual drone you know in the logo it's not required, all right. From a from a design standpoint, you want something that is is clean, sleek, right? Once you put like a drone with all the parts and the rotors and the propeller, it just really makes the, the 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 logo very busy. So again, some of the best logos out there don't even have a drone in it. Of course, you can tell that it's drone like, or you know, drone shape, or it's you know some type of way. But uh, I want to stress that. A one pager, right? When someone says, hey, send me something about what you do and some of your offerings, send them a one pager, right? You can go to Canva again, look and just search one page business flyer, right? Um, and, you know, just to, you know, on that, uh, just to touch again on that graphic design point, even if you're not like a graphic, you know, the best graphic designer, again, Canva makes it super, super easy. If you just follow the template that's given to you and just change the words, right? Um, you can, you know, use the color and, and, and connect it to your branding as well. But resources like Canva, even if you don't know graphic design, I would definitely, definitely try to use. It. We've been using it for years and years. All you literally have to do, go in, drop in your word, drop in your branding, and it makes it, you know, so much easier. Uh, lead magnet, you know, uh, business cards, letterhead, LinkedIn banners, and, um, you know, doing a website audit as well to see, uh, what you need to put on uh, to your website. I think I have slides for all these. Yeah. So um, one page flyer. These are some examples of of um, of uh, yeah re remakes that we've done for for some clients of ours. Um, this is a lead magnet, right? A lead magnet is not a a, a profile. This is a a resource, an ebook that you can give to your clients, right? That says, hey, this is the problem that we solve. Or maybe it's something that you host on your website that says, hey, like you can come here and download this um, and, you know, in exchange for your, your email. Now you can, you know, get on and uh, send them more information and, and, and build that bond and trust. Um, LinkedIn banners, you know, letterhead, business cards, all very important for different situations where you're going to be going out and and talking to folks. 
Um, and then your website, right? Making sure you have a call to action. Make sure you have case studies, right? To talk about your work. If you don't have any case studies, find some, right? Find some work that you can go out and map and just get something that you can show, right? Your first, your first job that you show but well, the first job that you do doesn't necessarily have to bring in all the money, right? A lot of times you even have to do it for free, right? Just to get your foot in the door. But if you can't show a case study to someone else, they're not going to hire you, right? No one's going to hire, no one, you know, typically is going to, you know, come in and, and pay you a lot of money for your first job. It's just not going to happen. So you have to show them a case study, something that, you know, can, can prove what you can do. Um, mobile friendly design, of course, optimizing it for SEO. So when people search, um, they can find you. Uh, step three is, is building awareness. So we do this from creating content. We do this, what we call warm outreach. We also have cold outreach and we have paid ads as well. Content are things like, you know, LinkedIn, you know, uh, posts, insightful educational posts on LinkedIn, having an email list. Uh, creating a blog or a newsletter, you know, YouTube video content about what you do, uh, podcasts, um, um, and you always, you know, allows you to, these things allow you to be searchable, you know, on Google, um, because when people are looking up, hey, drone company in, in in Namibia, right? Because you are talking about these things on your website, they're automatically gonna, you know, um, you know, be drawn to there. And it's not just posting one blog post and leaving, right? You have to keep your website, you know, updated. Uh, as much as possible um in your content you want to be able to answer potential client questions right so as you start talking to more clients they're going to ask you oh can the drone do this or i don't think the drone is right for me because this right you want to be able to take all that information right and put it into your content like your your the questions that you or the the content that you're creating are answering specific questions right these are the issues, the problems that people are having, and it makes it so much easier, right, to position yourself as the authority because you're literally answering questions that most other people in that situation will have. So case in point for me, my target audience is other drone business owners. So when I have meetings and I have coaching sessions and I have group calls with other drone business owners, I listen to all the questions that they're asking. I write those questions down and I literally just make that as a post on on on, uh, on on LinkedIn. So this could be pricing that someone had an issue with, or what do I do in a client meeting, right? Someone literally asks, "Hey, I have a I have a meeting with a client the other day. Um, you know, what what should I do? Like, how do I prepare for that?" So not only, of course, did I tell them, you know, how to prepare for the meeting, but I went to LinkedIn the next day and I said, "Hey, ever wondering how to how to prepare for your drone client meeting?" And I made a post that did, you know, really well. So what happens as a result of that post, other drone business owners are going to say, hey, you know, they know what they're talking about. Like he's, you know, he's talking, he's, he's speaking to me, right? He's discovering my pain points. Now I'm in their system. They're going to check out my page. And then I'll, of course, you know, uh, reach out, you know, at some point. So it is a constant, like, uh, targeting, right, of your specific pain points. Um <clears throat> warm outreach this is literally reaching out to your network um this is also connections on linkedin as well right um i always suggest 10 to 20 messages per day this is of course for you know very advanced you know operations but even if it's 10 to 20 linkedin connections per day that you're making right those are potential and it, these are people that that are in your field right um these are potential that yeah you can be working with in the future um you know connections you know making introductions dms you can be calling people you know sending emails to your list right you have to be like constantly constantly doing outreach the reason why most people don't see any traction is because they're just not doing any of these things right they're not sending dms they're not making connections with people they're not sending, you know, five to 10 to 20 messages per day. And it's like, you expect to, to have all this like feedback. It's like, no, like you, you have to reach out to these people. You have to actually make, you have to be the aggressor, right? You actually have to go out and, 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 uh, and, and, and send these messages and send these emails. Otherwise no one's going to, you know, be looking for you. Um, <clears throat> code outreach, people who don't know you, there's ways to do this through like emails, through calls. I'm not a big fan of cold calls at all. 
Um, you could also be going to like networking events. Um, you know, of course, LinkedIn targeted prospecting. Uh, and then also, you know, network um, industry specific events. Um, there's a lot of drone events, you know, going on here, or there. But if you want to reach your target customer, you know, agricultural, you know, farmers, you have to go to farming conventions, right? Go to meetups where these farmers are located. Um, go to, you know, um, different nonprofits, right? Who have clusters of farmers, right? Find out how you get involved, right? With those people. It's like, you have to position yourself to where they are. You have to go to where they are and preferably physically, right? So any type of, you know, farmers conference or, you know, anything that you see, just Google search in your city. Is there anything that's coming up for farming or agritech or things like that? Those are the events that you want to attend because you don't, I mean, of course, we want to connect with other drone people, but you want to connect with your industry, right? You want to connect with your target audience. So instead of just going to, you know, um, uh, events that, you know, go to, um, you know, where your target customer is, um, paid ads is also always good, but it definitely takes time to work up to this. So I wouldn't suggest doing paid ads until you have solid marketing, um, strategy in place, but this is actually how you scale your business. Once you have, you know, a solid foundation, uh, in place, um, step four building, you know, bonding and, and building trust. Um, so, after you have created awareness you now you know those months of time that i mentioned before the time it takes to actually close a client you have to nurture that lead right you have to send them more content you have to have a lead magnet you have to share your portfolio or a case study you have to be you know, they have to be seeing that you're serious through webinars that you've done or podcasts or blog posts right and then also following up a lot of times again you know there's this kind of a confusion on like when is the best time to follow up how many times am i supposed to follow up what if they just kind of blow me off i understand i mean and this is a part of business right it happens to everyone um but just to kind of you know uh just to kind of manage a few things I mean, um you know uh, how you approach this i typically do three outreach three or uh, three um uh three time outreach if I message you and I don't hear back your third time, I literally just say, hey, seems like, you know, time now is not the right time. Keep me in mind for, you know, future opportunities. Right. Um, I typically give about a week to two weeks. Right. Um, before I'm like sending the second and third message, people get busy. Right. Um, you know, I'm not going to sit up here and expect someone to be answering my email, uh, you know, 24, 48 hours or Look, someone could easily have, you know, issues going on, uh, other work, you know, it could even be personal, like who know people have a lot of things going on. So don't, don't kind of, you know, feel some type of way if someone doesn't message you back in three or four or five days, right? Just kindly message them again. Hey, just following up on my, on my email, just, you know, wondering uh, if you got a chance to, to look it over. Let me know if you have any questions. Just keep it simple, right? You don't have to like, you know, uh, you know, so if they don't answer after that, uh, maybe it's another week or 10 days, right? Hey, I just wanted to, you know, check back again. I'm sure you've been busy, you know, no problem at all. Just wanted to check back again, right? Those things matter. I promise you, if you just keep a decent, you know, follow up protocol. The other thing is you want to have these things on a list, right? Literally just create a spreadsheet where you have the name of the person, you have their company, and you have the last day that you talk to them, right? This will help you to like see, and this is something you should probably do every single day. Like literally go through your leads list, say, all right, I talked to this person. Okay, it's been two weeks since I talked to them. It's time for a follow-up. Or I talked to this person, you know, uh, four days ago, I need to send them, you know, a lead magnet or just really be able to track your leads. Um, that's yeah, kind of a point I need to uh, put in here as well. But yeah, have a spreadsheet where it allows you to easily track um, track your leads as well. Um, all right. So, yeah, we talked about those things. We talked about a lead magnet, of course. Um, and yeah, you know, converting. So um, it's not, it's, you know, step five for converting. So these are, you know, your sales techniques, you know, selling in the DMs, you know, having an actual script that you can use um to reach out to people this is you know 
sort of like an example I like to show because this this person actually became a, a client of mine and it literally happened because I reached out with him with some free content, right? I said, hey, William, thanks for um, interacting with my content. See, he had never even said anything specific. I think he just liked some of my uh, posts. So I said, hey, um, uh, regarding my post on AI, I actually put together a list of 21 chat GPT prompts that saved me a ton of time daily, helps with marketing content and so forth. Um, are you open to me sharing with you? Right. So I'm I'm leading with value. I'm not messaging like, hey, can I help you get five and ten more clients for your drone business? No. Who's going to answer that type of message? Or can I can I help you? Can I just do a, a drone survey? No one. You know, that's not how you approach people. You approach people with value. So that lead magnet that I talked about, if you are reaching out to someone and say, hey, I saw you're in the agritech you know, space, um, you know, here in Nairobi, I'm a, a drone pilot. You know, I have a, a, a guy that talks about, you know, how we use, you know, drones in, in agri agriculture and how we're helping, you know, these, um, you know, these farmers, uh, you know, save, uh, you know, save their crops from pests. Pests. Would you mind if I like share with you? Like who wouldn't want to see something like that? Right. So, of course, William says, hey, your content is is um, is great. Appreciate what you do. Absolutely. I'm interested in the prompts. So now. I sit in that lead magnet. Now we start having a conversation. Hey, how long have you been in the drone business? Oh, okay, cool. Like, what kind of challenges are you facing? Oh, okay, it's, you're having issues getting leads. What are you trying to do to get? So it's like you can have a conversation from there. You set up a call, right? You set up a meeting with the person, and then you can pitch your services and you know finish it out from there. Um, a part of this is also having a really good offer. And then, of course, just, you know, some of those strategies, um, like I said, the follow up protocol and things like that to actually close the deal. Um, just a quick look at what a good offer is and a bad offer. And I'm going to take a little pause for for question and answers. Um, but a bad offer like doesn't offer anything specific. It's very like generic and like what you're offering. So no clear value, you know, there's no uh, um, offer of like the risk reversal no urgency, um, no price clarifications or anchoring, really vague outcomes, as opposed to a good offer, which is very specific on everything that your client is going to receive from you. Right. So a lot of times we have really good prospects. You know, we're just not giving them the right offer. We're just not giving them a compelling offer. It just it just doesn't appeal to them. Right. So make sure that those things um, are in place. And just this piece here, um, a good offer is tailored to a business to businesses that need advanced drone services and highlights the compressive nature, comprehensive nature of the service, um, the safety net of a guarantee and an added value of urgent action. Um, a bad offer is generic, lacks incentivizing elements and does not communicate the specialized value of this service. Um, so, yeah, so we talked about most of these. Just, so just a recap, you know, step one, setting the foundation. Uh, doing a brand audit, step two. Step three, creating awareness, right? That top of funnel. Step four, bonding with your leads. And step five, closing the deal. So I'm going to go ahead and take a pause there. I know I covered quite a bit in the last uh, uh, 30 minutes or so. But um, but yeah, as you can tell, I'm very passionate about, uh, about this subject. And um, yeah, I want to make sure that I'm giving the best information for you all so i'm open to any feedback or questions that you guys have and um yeah thank you for the opportunity to to present today all right uh thank you so much i know that was actually broad and also deep um uh, we have uh not too much question yet from what i can see uh from our trainees uh, yeah Trying to look for the comments. Do you see I have other slides to share? If we can just actually this here like 10 minutes, uh, then we would actually go into the next. Um, uh, let me see how much is on this. I think this is for another webinar. Let me just see. 
Uh, yeah, sure. I can show a few extra. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's go. Um. Yeah. So just you know, some some folks that we've uh, that we worked with, um, Drone Nectar, you know, out of Kenya. Um, actually, very interesting story. He they have a, a drone academy there, and they um, they were you know looking for ways to get more clients. We talked about their email list. And um, um, they sent out a new offer, you know, to their existing list, people that they, they, they had already kind of worked with in the past. And uh, from one email, they were able to generate about $8,000 in revenue, right, for a new training that they were offering, right? This is, just a, this is an existing email list that they had. So a lot of times it's just taking advantage of that email list, um, people that are, you know, already in your connection and just, you know, taking advantage of that. So that was good to kind of see see those results um other examples of how we brand you know different clients so this client you know we do like a one page uh flyer for him and then he has his brochure that he that he does his linkedin banner his lead magnet right so you can see everything is is branded it's in focus um if you go to any platform if he sends you uh everything is you know targeted you don't see you know four and five different pictures and also yeah a quick note for um the graphic side of things, you want to stick to three um, uh, colors max, right? Um, so in any type of design, you want to have three. So, you know, right here, of course, with Airdia, they have yellow, they have red. Um, you can consider this this gray, you know, as one of it as well. Um, but, you know, very, very targeted. Even some of our other clients here, um, very specific on this these are some lead magnets i would encourage you all to definitely have a very targeted lead magnet in your um in your linkedin profile so people know when they go to your page exactly what you do and who you help and 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 so on and so forth um and some other examples of yeah lead magnets here uh, oh also linkedin carousels uh, linkedin carousels do uh very well when it comes to educational content and it has a lot of um you know, generates a lot of interest um you know there as well so i would encourage that um you see some business cards here and then um yeah just making sure everything is is well branded um so yeah the rest of this is just for yeah webinar uh things but yeah definitely uh you know some some things to show there um and yeah you know, open to any any questions uh, that you all may have. I'm sure, there's got to be got to be something. But yeah, this is this is the five step process. Um, and if you follow me on LinkedIn, you know you'll definitely uh, hear more about you know all these. Uh, this is definitely something I talk about you know quite a bit. So yeah, any any questions or clarifications um, you all need, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer. Yeah, thank you so much. I think I have uh, somebody making comments. Said you will have a wonderful presentation. Uh, share some strategies with us today that means people are businesses, uh, especially those and agribusiness. Uh, yeah, Th thank you so much for sharing uh, with us. I guess uh, I've been waiting for questions. However, in an industry like agriculture and you are actually targeting uh you know commercial scale farms who oftentimes uh you know not really on linkedin too much you know the decision makers of this commercial farm uh what what would you advise or what would be your strategy to actually get them you know to actually buy into phone service yeah yeah. So. yeah well i think you have to you have to not only speak the language you have to understand how they consume content right so yes if they're not on linkedin how do they get the educational information is it more likely a print material that you have to like physically take and, and show them and they sit down and do it or maybe they're very, you know, fancy on WhatsApp and they can see a video and like watch a video explainer and, and things like that that you have to do. But you have to meet your audience 
where they are um mm. so yeah it's not a you know one size fits all type of thing but if you know that typically this client is getting information from print or from whatsapp or they like reading or they like viewing right that's the type of information that you have to have to probe that that client so to that point we would go back to the avatar right and we would say all right we know that where did i explain the avatar uh okay so this target customer right i told you like there's more detail that would typically go in this this avatar right so under this target you say hey they like consuming their content via printed material so now you know that like that's your method that's your strategy you have to have very well you know displayed very clear materials because that's regardless of how you're going to get a new client you have to educate them right they have to be educated they have to know plainly and clearly what is this drone thing you know why should i even consider it? who's going to help me the other thing you want to make sure you're doing is you're talking to the people who are actually going to pay you right a lot of times you may be talking to people that may not have the resources right and especially when it comes to certain farmers they're most likely in sort of like a cluster or they're part of a larger organization right that manages all these farmers so i'm not saying you're wasting your time because you're finding good information from them but you want to if you're going to be putting in your effort and your time to to do marketing like that's time that's money that you're putting into it you want to make sure you're spending it and sending it to the right person so that's that's another thing yeah thank you very much and i think you actually shared something with us i'm just going to go through the slide um around the value of this pair you know mm -hmm. if you can actually go through uh, to, to that uh, yeah and so the question is uh what should somebody be doing what should an entrepreneur be doing because i think from this um chat it looks like every entrepreneur will actually find itself around the stage and an often time as uh in the valley, you always think you are the only one who's passing through it or walk past through it, you know. So what do you what strong will be your advice to someone at this at this stage and um, what should they be doing? What uh, what should they set their minds to what should they be doing to actually win to actually then scale uh to the forwards and uh, the stage? Yeah. Um so yeah you know very good question um the first thing i would say is you got to tap into your why right um why did you decide to go in this business where is your passion coming from a lot of times you find people who say oh yeah i want to go do drones for construction but they've never gone to a construction site in their life they don't know any construction they could care <laughs> less about construction right they just want to <laughs> you know just want to get the construction so yeah exactly so do you actually care about what you're doing like do you are you passionate about that line so that's the first thing what is your why right if they if honestly you could ask if yeah if if you didn't have if you if they if you weren't making money would you still be doing this that's a straight up question right? would you would you continue to do this if you if they weren't paying so that's how passionate you have to be about it so that's that's the one thing um the second thing is using resources to like identify your path out of there right and and being honest with yourself with all right why am i here right if i'm not good at marketing maybe i just i'm not a, i'm not a good marketer right maybe i have to find someone that can help you know on that side um you don't have to be everything right realizing that all right these are my these are my flaws these are the areas that i'm really good at these are the areas that i need you know improvement so being really you know understanding that hey like you know i'm here you know because i'm probably lacking these pieces of the puzzle right so you know being able to say all right step one step two step three these are the things that need to get done to get me to stage five right a lot of times we know all these things we know what needs we did we done we know we probably should be doing more you know content more outreach more 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 right we know we should be you know but sometimes it's just not like 
applying those things and like actually implementing a lot of this is just implementation just straight up you just have to like actually just do the work you know we know what like needs to be done a lot of times but it's just you know for whatever reason we get caught up you know family you know life data connection you know think anything can can mess up your flow and mess up your habits but you have to have that list of um things that you're gonna do like that plan to get yourself out of that right that is very very important the third thing I would say is just time, right? Again, the most successful people, it's not like they've done any magic or they just kind of come up. They just literally have been doing it for the longest time. <laughs> like That's it. Yeah. That's literally it. So if you're like a year or two years into this and you're like, oh, man, like, I'm sorry. You have a <laughs> much longer to go, right? I am uh, nine years into this thing. And I still feel like, you know, we're growing and learning and there's so much growth. And yeah, we come a very long way, but my two year, you know, self in this, you know, nowhere near the amount of uh, experience and connections and networking and things that have happened. So, yeah, um, your why having a plan and then just time. I think those are the biggest things to get yourself through there. Yeah, that, that that was actually profound. Um, yeah, give it time. Give it time. I think you mentioned give it time. Uh, and so actually put that in the comment section. Yeah, I think the first one you mentioned was actually knowing your why uh, and uh, which then results in the, the, the passion, the passion behind which keeps you, keeps it, it, it drives you on. You know, you just find yourself doing it again and mm -hmm. again and again. Hearing uh, no's, and hearing a bunch of no's all the time. You know, what's <laughs> going to keep you keep you going? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And oftentimes, you know, we we, are, we live in a world of social media when we, you know, we just put in our best out there and people don't know that there's a lot of no's. There's a lot of, you know, uh, things More that no's. can weigh you down. More no's. And I, I know a lot of times we hear that from other people and say, yo, you have to go, you have to fail so much to win. But you actually hear so many more no's than you hear yes. <laughs> like it, it, And if you realize, if you understand that, then it makes the no's like it doesn't phase you. Right. Um, a lot of people, once they hear no, it's like an automatic, like discouraging thing. But entrepreneurs we hear no we're like okay cool like how can i get better like thank you for saying like now i'm going to go back and get better like you use that as fuel rather than yeah. uh something yeah. bad yeah yeah and the second point you mentioned is implementation is key. doing the work having a plan uh having a plan yeah. is very very important and I, and I think that's why business plan is very important uh for an entrepreneur um maybe maybe you can just quickly walk us through the concept of a business plan uh, for yeah. an agritech uh you did just a little bit but just let's give us kind of an overview of the business plan because this is actually one of the things you mentioned to actually get out out of the the value of this year you know to sort yeah so I'm, I'm gonna actually do something that's uh um that is uh probably gonna be very helpful of course there are certain parts of the business plan um sorry just let me uh let's go put this in the chat okay oh i don't think it let me post the full okay it kind of cut it off i'm going to share the link to this and maybe you can you can share the link to everyone as well um so basically you know with chat gbt now it makes it very easy to create you know a business plan um you know in a matter of minutes right so i would encourage you to go and uh, use this prompt that I just shared with with Femi and um, it gives you literally you know the full kind of scope of what's needed in your business plan so 
Uh, of course, you know, your executive summary that talks about, um, you know, uh, your why, right? How this business came about, your, your vision, your mission, um, your specialty, right? What are your key services, your core services? Who is your target market? Um, uh, what is your revenue generating model, right? Um, what is your, you know, market analysis? Like, it's very important. Like, based on your location, what, how does that industry, how does that industry that you're targeting, what is the, uh, the advantage of you, you know, doing that in your location? You know, for instance, I had someone I talked to uh, the other day that has a drone that's specific on, um, like, they use for like underground water for water pipe surveys um for, you know underground like kind of water pipes doesn't need gps doesn't need anything um you know vision system it just it's a drone that you know can go autonomously so if they want to break into a market they're going to have to go to countries that actually have hydroelectric power right they're not going to go to or target a country that doesn't you know rely on that or doesn't have you know as much as they're, they're going to do market research and figure out, hey, does this business model work in this place, right? So of course, you know, a lot of us are in in, in scenarios where agriculture is 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 definitely huge. Of course, it's always going to be a big one, but there are certain industries that won't work as well in other you know industries. So making sure that you you know do that market research, um, you have a marketing plan inside of the business plan, so it just kind of spells out how you're actually going to execute. Um, what makes you like, you know, a good, uh, like a competitive analysis, uh, more like a SWOT analysis, well, SWOT analysis is different, but uh, competitive analysis, literally go look up your competitors, put them the top three to five competitors that are, you know, in your space that you're gonna have to compete with, put them on your business plan. So you know exactly who you're trying to, you know, aspire to be like, um, you can have financial projections in there um and so forth so i would definitely yeah, use this this prompt um which will help you get to, to a starting point as you know you know chat gpt is is great for kind of setting uh, a bit of a foundation but you'll always have to uh you know uh put in your own wording and, and things like that so um yeah i would definitely encourage you to use that that prompt yeah thank thank you so much um as we actually wrapping up i would like you to actually give you know drone technology is uh is relatively new to people uh particularly in the agri-tech industry agriculture uh people sometimes have been to exhibitions and people see drones and they say ah, is this real you know uh, so what, what will you, what will be your advice, um, for someone in the industry, uh, trying to actually grow the market, trying to bring awareness, you know, trying to do the work, like you mentioned. Yeah. I mean, so just, just, possible. yeah, just, just follow these steps, right? Just, you know, make sure you know, for probably first and foremost is yeah. Make sure your branding is, is in place before you start reaching out to people, before you start you know, making connections and don't have something of value to give them. Um, this is the work, right? This is, this is a whole list of things that can easily take you months to do and put together. Right. Um, even for like the, the, you know, the, the most efficient person, right? Because once you put it together, you send it around for feedback, you get this, you get that. So focusing on this, this, this plan, right? This is how you put yourself out there. And to be completely honest, you can probably do all these things on the list list for free. There are websites that you can do all these things, even a free website. There are you know, places that you can have a free landing page. Just start with a landing page. You don't have to have a full out, you know, the, well, you know, just uh, I think the, the website is card. I think C-A-R-R-D. Uh, let me make sure that's correct. Yeah, so C A R R D card.com. You can actually create, oh, sorry, dot co. Um, you can create a free landing page. Um, you have you have Canva for creating your letterhead, your banners, your business cards, your lead magnet, your one pager, uh, even your logo, right? That's all for free on Canva. So, but make sure it's, it looks 
Correct. Right. So bounce it off someone, uh, bounce it off two or three people. Right. Because the first one, maybe they're just trying to be nice and, and tell you, you know, and it looks good. But get some objective advice. Take that objective advice. You know, streamline your marketing materials. Make sure it looks professional. Do not start reaching out to someone uh, until you have a professional look and design for sure. That's, I, you know, first impressions of everything. So I can't stress how yeah. important. Now, I think that's that's actually something I actually learned. Uh, first impression really matter. I think there was one of your uh, uh, a conversation, a section that you actually made mention that impression really does matter. First impression. And, and I think those part that has actually helped us. I mean, creating that perception, like that serious, uh, like this, is, even though you're small, but like mm, these people look serious. Uh, I, look, I, I, I see. I had a post that said, hey, this is how you make a $5 company look like a $5 million company, right? And it's branding. That's it. That's literally how you make a company that literally could be on their last, you know, their last uh, leg. And you go to their website and you're like, wow, this company is, <laughs> you know, they are doing some things that you wouldn't even know that, you know. So, yes, branding is very, very important. Absolutely. Very, very essential. Very, very. So perception is actually the game. And I think value is actually based on what is, value is perceived. So if you actually get your heart of perception right, you know, you can be able to command the right value. Uh, you know, value is all that we're trying to do. Doing business, you want to actually extend value and to get the optimal or maximum value as much as possible. And I think branding is very, very important. How you have to do this yourself. Uh, yeah, I mean... They're actually working every day. Yeah, you go to the top. Go to the top websites on in the industry. Follow the top leaders. Go to Drone Deploy website. Go to Pilot by. Go to Skydio. See what their website looks like. Right. Mm -hmm. If your website doesn't look like that, then there's some work you need to do. It's as simple as that. Right. Mm -hmm. You you want your website to look like these top websites. And again, it's not something that you have to spend a whole lot of money on. Do you, are you going to have to spend something? Yeah, likely, but that's business, right? At some point, you're going to have to spend something, right? That That's literally how business is done. You have to find, you have to invest. Just like you're investing in the drone, if you go out and buy the drone, you can also buy a nice website to go along with that drone, right? That's how you have to think about mm -hmm. it. It's not like, you know, you can kind of pick and choose. Like, you're choosing to invest in your business by getting that drone. You should also include a little bit more money to now pay for a decently done website so that people can take you seriously yeah all right thank you so much Eno. and um so we are wrapping up now and i would say what would be your last uh you know words of advice for us for the students and generally uh you know about your session today as we wrap up yeah um well i think i've you know kind of explained most of it but you know again just you know be deliberate with uh with your actions and your steps um don't ever feel like you have to just be you know lost or, or figuring things out you know we we created global air U to um to solve these questions to solve problems to help give you the best information to grow your business so i would say from here Go to our website, you know, globalairu.com, download a free lead magnet, uh, follow me on LinkedIn as well. I'm very active there and, you know, there's more information coming out like this, but yeah, just have a plan, um, you know, regardless of, of what you're doing and make sure you, yeah, follow the funnel as well. And I can guarantee you, if you are doing this and you're consistent and you're, and you're actually putting in time to this, it's guaranteed results, uh, you know it's proven it's you know from if anything else it's it's my nine years in this i've packed all that knowledge you know into this training so you can be rest assured that um that yeah we're, we we had the best information for you so yeah appreciate the opportunity yeah thank you so much eno and i would also reiterate um eno is actually a wonderful uh mentor and coach uh as it is and, and this is one thing that we are passionate about doing, connecting you with people who matters, industry leaders, uh, bringing you close to mentorship. So he's actually uh, someone that I can actually recommend for you to, to guide you, you know, 
experience in, in the marketing world, like you've actually said here. And I believe that knowledge that you have shared today can actually be applied across the board uh, in any of your business. And very, very important. Thank you so much again, Eno, for joining us, sharing all the restricted value with us. And uh, we hope that um, we can be able to connect with you again, you know, um, to learn uh, individually and, uh, and again, you know, on this section. But we, we do have to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank all right, all. guys. See ya. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, yeah. Tess. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you so much, guys, for joining today. Uh, it's been uh, an amazing one hour, uh, 15 minutes uh, on this call. And um, I believe that you've been impacted, you know, by, uh, and you've been enlightened to, uh, because they've been tra training you on technical skills. Uh, and we know that's not enough to actually bring the innovation to the market perhaps to bring it to the hands of the farmers or to actually deliver value. You actually need some soft skills such as the enterprise or business development, understanding personal development. Uh, and that's what we will be doing this week in our last week of the incubation program. Um, so I want to remind you on the group, the sharing with you, um, the feedback form is too well to actually fill it out. Uh, we believe that we've actually shared with you uh, from the best of our resources at low on, uh, no cost um, and uh, we, we believe that you would also be replicating the same we want to actually engage you we want to actually grow with you uh we want to actually see you grow uh and um you know um influencing you know the agricultural industry for good and that's actually uh like we always say we are, we are ready to actually prepare you for the future of work yeah the future of work in technology in agriculture and that's what we are actually doing and that's where uh that's that's actually our why yeah that's our, actually our why so tomorrow we're going to be having another person that's that james that james is uh not it's another friend of mine uh she's actually one of the few people that will be having on this section she's going to be taking us to personal branding uh, uh you know branding particularly uh leveraging linkedin i think as an as an example of social media, you need to build your brand. Why is it important? What steps are you going to be taking? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to actually say much, uh, but just come tomorrow, tomorrow by 10 a.m., uh, I guess, for information will be communicated to you um, um, tonight. So thank you once again for joining us uh, from LinkedIn and also on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Franklin, thank you so much for joining in. I mentioned a very insightful session. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so guys, we'll be ending the stream now. And uh, I'll say see you tomorrow. And uh, keep learning, keep building your capacity. And, you know, become better. Thank you.